Here is Sailor Studio 735, a purple ink. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. I'm taking notes on an older Tomoe River uh, paper notebook and I have Sheen here, though it doesn't really show up anywhere in the writing samples. Uh, could be really a difference of pen and the flow. The purple of this ink is beautifully dark, but always stays as a purple, never crossing over that line to look kind of like a black. Here is a big time winner for the Sailor Studio line. It's a very consistent tone by pen with only slight variations in the tone. Even with how dark this is, there is still shading coming through. I certainly want a bottle of this if it doesn't tell you what I really think of this ink. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with a fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a one point. The pen for today is an Estherbrook Etsy. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get a nice dark purple with no feathering and no spread. We do get shading. Look at spider on the first line where the P, D, and E are darker than the rest of the word. Where like direct or a little underneath it is much darker than just to the left of that word. Where bobbing underneath that, the B is darker than the O, but the B, B, darken up a bit and the ing lighten a little bit more looking at the medium nib it is a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine just a little bit darker with no feathering with no spread the shading i think here shows up much better than it did with the extra fine take a look at branch on the first line where the B is quite dark. It lightens up into that R a little bit, but comes out of the R very dark, lightening into the A and C very dark at the H. And it does that a lot through this writing. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium with no feathering, with no spread, with shading, just as well as it did in the medium. A lot of darker tones and lighter tones and the shifting back and forth. Hanging most of the night, the whole second line, the H is darker, the AN lighten up just a little bit, darkens into the G, much lighter on the IN, darker again at the G, where most works its way from its lighter to its darker tones. Really beautiful shading, this, this whole thing. I'm really enjoying this ink. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting, no surprises. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 7 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine, where here it does sometimes get a little darker, not so much. This ink is so consistent in its performance. No feathering, no spread. It still shades, though not shading as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine. Not that that should be a surprise, given this is non-fountain pen friendly paper. It just happens to do very well with fountain pens. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine, same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We get shading just as well as the Claire Fontaine. Huge bonus, really speaking volumes for how great this ink is. Look at had on the second line. The H is much darker than the A in the beginning of the D, where the D gets much darker at the end. It's I'm enjoying this and really am the whole time, you'll see. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We still have shading. <laughs> 
amazingness here. Looking at the back of the page, you do see that we have some minor ghosting. I don't know about writing back here, except with the extra fine, I think you could write on the back of the page with no problem. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. The tone of this paper doesn't affect the ink, showing that it's a very opaque ink. Now there's no feather, there is no spread, we still get shading. I will say the shading isn't as standout as it was on the Claire Fontaine, but I think that's more my eye's ability to pick it up than it is anything else, because it's definitely there. Look at them on the first line, where the H is darker than the rest of the word, where we said some had hardly. Third line, some starts lighter, gets much darker at the E. Had, darker at the H, a lighter at the A, darker at the D. Hardly starts darker on the H, lightens into the AR during the D, darkens up into the LY. Looking at the medium nib, it is a tiny bit darker than it was with the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine with no feathering and with no spread, with shading not showing up as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine. The tone of the paper might be uh, taking some of it. It might be the little bit more absorbent nature of this paper. It is shading. You see had on the second line is quite a, is a bit darker than way on the third line, just a little underneath it. Bean next to had on the second line, a little bit lighter on the B, darker on the Een at the end. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium, the same tone as it was on the Claire Fontaine. There's no change in the color of what we're getting here. Beautifully opaque in what's going on. No feathering, no spread, some shading, not shading as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine, just like with the medium. There is shading though. Look at constantly on the third line. Con is a little lighter than the ST, lightens up into the ANT. The LY gets quite a bit darker at the end of it. Looking at the back of the page, we have no bleeding, no ghosting. I believe you could write back here taking notes without a problem. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left and water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is shading just as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine, which we would generally hope for. I think this is the most common paper that you, people look at. Fortunately, it performs well. Look at fortunately on the second line. The fort is lighter than the un next to that and the at lightens up a bit. Then the illy at the end, a bit darker. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine. Same tone as the Claire Fontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with the same amount of great shading that we had on the Claire Fontaine. The end of the branch on the first line, look at the T is lighter than the he and the, where N starts at a lighter tone and gets much darker to the D. Of is a pretty uniform tone where the starts lighter and gets darker. Branch starts as a little darker in part of the B, lightens up through some of the word, much darker again at the H. Beautiful shading all the time. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is shading just as well as it was with the medium. I think the stub is showing it off a little bit nicer with some of those thicker lines. 
end of the branch, first line, the E is darker than the N into the D, and the, the D ends much darker. Of goes lighter to darker, especially during that downstroke of the F, the lighter to darker. Branch darker to lighter to darker again. Looking at the back of the page, we get exactly what we would expect with no bleeding and no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Califolio Lilas. Here is Karen Dash Ultraviolet. Here is Cross Violet. Here is Diatrementis Pearl Violet. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get to see just how standout great this ink is and how opaque it is. It is the same tone as the Clairefontaine with no feathering and no spread. No real shading coming through here. A few darker spots. Not any kind of standout shading though. And it still looks very good on this slightly off-white paper. And to be honest, if a student used this, bonus points. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine, a little lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It has no feathering. It has no spread. It has shading coming through that wasn't really coming through as well in the extra fine. It's not shading as well as it did with the Clairefontaine, but it is definitely there. Look at leave your bones on the first line. LE is darker than the AV and the E darkens up again, where your is a fairly uniform tone. The downstroke of the B is a bit darker than the rest of the B, lightens up through the O and E darkens up and lightening into the S. Yeah, this is a good one. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, a little bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. I feel like that's a kind of shame here, though. We're getting a beautiful tone on the page. No feathering, no spread. Shading, I think, again, is brought more to the front from the stub nib because of those thicker downstrokes. The, the shading is very nice. While, the going, or while this was going on, second line, the W is lighter than the H. It gets a, the, that H being a little darker, lightens slightly into the I, much darker on the LE. This, the T is lighter than the his at the end, was fairly uniform tone till the end of the S where it gets darker. Going is one tone and on starts a little lighter than it gets on the N, which is a little bit darker. Looking at the back of the page, you can see why I like this notebook. No bleeding, no ghosting, easily continuing, continuing your notes on the back of the page. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to see ink to complement the color on the page. Here is Robert Oster Pinky. Here is Diatrementis Red Orange. Here is Diamine Amaranth. Here is Califolio Hori Dori. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Clairefontaine, about the same tone that we got from the medium and stub on the Clairefontaine. Yes, it feathers and yes, it spreads. No, it does not shade. I do find the feathering and the, the feathering to be a little distracting. Look at at and knives both on the left side or threads on the first line, not clear on the third line because a lot of this writing becomes not clear. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, same tone as the Clairefontaine. It does feather, it does spread. It is a bit distracting when you've got spiders coming at you. Look at the spiders on the first line. The feather in a spread is just disgusting to see. Before you move on, look at before on the third line. Same problem, disgustingness everywhere and no shading, not anything to really be worried about there.
looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does feather, it does spread. It is as bad to look at as it was with the medium. It's not shading. This is disgusting. Looking at the back of the page, I think it's pretty clear by the extreme amount of ghosting. The ink gets very deep into the paper. You can't write on the back of the page, but if you see the page underneath, nothing bled through touching that page. So at least you're only ruining one sheet of paper. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The Extra Fine gives a beautiful dark purple that shades and really stands out. Now the medium and the stub both look the same and are just a tad bit darker than it was from the Extra Fine. All of the performance is amazing. It's important to point out that the Estherbrook SD is wetter than the retros that were used for the writing sample. So from the Etsy I'm, or SD, I'm getting some sheen. So if you want sheen, go for a slightly wetter than medium flow pen. Not really a wet pen, although I suppose it would work, but wetter than just an average flow. Me, I grab any pen and go because I don't think it matters what pen you put this in. You are gonna get a great consistent performance. So it's dealer's choice. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. I wanna let you know that the best way you can support this or any channel is to let retailers know where you heard of something if you go to buy.